Welcome to the Statistic in ED YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about how to access SQL databases in R and I want to show you three approaches. I think it can be interesting both for those who haven't worked with databases in R yet and just want to get started and also for people who maybe work with databases in R already but are just aware of the one approach they've been using so far. So if you know more approaches you can make a more informed decision on which approach works best for your use case. So I want to introduce you to three approaches, and these three approaches are the following, the DBI package and an associated backend package, so we'll see an example of that. Another approach is the dplyr package in combination with the dbplyr package, where db stands for database, and the third approach is to embed SQL code in R markdown documents or notebooks, you can say. So these are the three approaches I want to show you today. And then we have a small bonus section about best practices and some more package recommendations. So let's dive right in. The first approach that we look at is the DBI package and the backend package. So DBI is used to establish a database connection. DBI stands for database interface. And then we need one additional package um, that relates to the backend that we have. So the most common ones are the ones that you see in the table. I don't want to read them all out, but the packages are R MySQL, R PostgreSQL, R SQLite, ODBC, and Big R Query. So if your specific database is not in there, then you have a good chance to be able to connect to your database using the ODCB, ODBC package, Open Database Connectivity Protocol. So a lot of commercial DBs um, work well with this protocol, but you can also use additional drivers that I'll show you later on. The DBI package is quite well documented, so you might want to check out the vignettes. You can type help package equals DBI to get an overview of the vignettes that are there. So this is an example. You first need to establish a database connection, which is not shown on the slide, but you see an example in this um, box on the right-hand side. You use the DB connect function to do that. And then you can use a couple of functions to access elements of the database, for example, DB list tables or DB read table. And then the main workhorse for working with the database would probably be DB get query, or in some instances, if you want to manipulate the database, DB send query. So here you see an example for DB get query. And those who are familiar with SQL code, I think will easily relate to this approach. Um, you have this DB get query function. The first argument is always the database connection, and the second argument is just a quoted SQL expression. So if you know SQL or you have SQL code um, somewhere else, this is a way of embedding this SQL code and using it in R scripts. Right. That was briefly the first approach. You can always pause the video if you want to take a closer look at the code. The second approach I want to show you is the db the dplyr package in combination with the dbplyr package so this is very neat because if you're familiar with the tidyverse and dplyr um, you can use exactly the same syntax no matter if your data lives in R's memory or in a database um, we'll see an example in a moment um, more characteristics of the dbplyr package is, package are it's lazy so it means it doesn't pull data into R unless you explicitly ask it to do so, and it delays work until the last possible moment. So this way, um, the SQL code can be optimized to run an efficient query. And even then, when you ask for data, um, by default, only a few rows of data are pulled to R. Um, so if you want to run the full query, you need to explicitly um, do so using the collect function that I highlighted here in yellow. So the advantage is that you can play with your code, experiment with your queries, and you won't lose much time running large queries and waiting for a lot of data to get pulled to R. Um, but you can um, experiment and only um, spend more time when you explicitly collect the data. So it means that you write dplyr code, and the dplyr code gets translated to SQL code by the dbplyr package. and dbplyr takes care of the database communication. You can also use the show query function to see how dbplyr translated your dplyr R code to SQL. Um, it works almost the same way as if the data were in R's memory, but there are some 
caveats, for example, the enroll function doesn't work before you use the collect function because R just doesn't know how many rows will be returned once the full query is run. And also the tail function doesn't work because um, R doesn't know what the last few lines of your data will be. Right, here's a small example. It's just ordinary dplyr code that you see here. Um, it's from the New York City Flights package. The data was copied to an in-memory database. And then we just have this um, dplyr code selecting a few columns. And you see we get a data set back. But here it's called a lazy query. And you see the two question marks. So R doesn't know how many rows there are because we didn't collect the data yet. We just get a couple of rows back to see what the result will look like. Also at the bottom you see with more rows, but it doesn't specify how many rows which is different to dplyr working with R, um, with data in R's memory. Right. Um, so these are a couple of databases that dbplyr supports. It should cover a lot of use cases. Um, also the databases that we saw before are supported. If you need more, we'll get to that in a moment. And there's a link here to um, RStudio website, so a lot of credit for what I show here goes to the RStudio team. The db.rstudio.com website is a great place to find more information. So it's available for free. You can really find out a lot of um, ideas about how to deal with data and databases. Right, so now we've seen two approaches, the DBI package and the backend package and the dplyr dbplyr approach. So the third approach I want to briefly talk about is embedding SQL code and R Markdown documents. So maybe you're not aware of that. Um, those who know Markdown will probably have used R code there, but you can also embed code from other programming languages like Python or SQL, as we see here. And there are a lot of other languages that are supported. I put a link here at the bottom. So I think it's over 50 languages that are supported. Julia, for example, and even some commercial software. If you have it installed, you can use the software, um, the code for that software inside Markdown documents. Those who don't know Markdown, it's a very powerful way of um, writing reports in R. You don't uh, need to copy results from your statistical software to a report document, but but you can do it all in one place. You can write plain text that appears in your report and you can embed um, external graphics and also results of your calculations and your plots. So it's all in one place and you can even, as you see here, embed SQL code there. So the advantage here is that you get syntax highlighting from the SQL code, which we didn't get with the DBI approach that we saw in the beginning. Um, you can specify some chunk options in R Markdown, as you see here in the dark gray box. Um, yeah. Of course, you also need a database connection that must be specified first. So here in the chunk header, we just say connection equals con. So that has to be defined um, before that code block. Right, so that was the third approach. Um, to sum up these three approaches quickly, the DBI plus backend package approach has a benefit of requiring few dependencies. So it's a very direct approach. If you're familiar with SQL, I think you can adapt to that style quickly. You can embed your SQL code into R scripts. The dplyr syntax approach using the dbplyr package in the backend that you don't need to worry about so much directly because it, it works um, in the background. And that's very neat if you're familiar with tidyverse syntax and especially dplyr syntax. And it's especially useful um, if the source of your data changes in the course of a project. Imagine you have a great idea, you start out small, you have some data in R's memory, you experiment with it and write a lot of code to access this data and deal with it and do some fancy calculations. And then your project grows and people say, it's a great idea, we need to scale this up. And then the data gets put in a database with different approaches, you would have to rewrite your code to adapt to the database. With the dplyr approach, you don't have to rewrite your code. All you have to do is um, define a database connection, and then you can access that database connection as if it were data in R's memory, and you can use the same code that you used before. And dbplyr translates your R code to SQL and takes care of database communication. So that's a great advantage. And also the lazy variation that we talked about can be an advantage because you don't uh, lose much time experimenting with your queries. 
And the third approach with the R Notebook SQL Engine um, also has a good benefit, and that is, um, well, syntax highlighting, as I said, and also um, the formatting issue is easier than with the first approach with the DBI package and a backend package. Um, let's say you have quotes inside your SQL code. Then it may get a bit more complicated in the first case with the DBI package because then you need to escape the quotes inside your SQL statement because the SQL statement itself is quoted in an R function. So um, you may need to format your SQL query a little bit to escape quotes, for example. And with using the R markdown um, approach, you don't need to do that. You can directly paste your SQL code. You get the benefit of syntax highlighting and it's even more straightforward. And there's another link here to dbrstudio.com um, to find out more if you want more details about this. Right, so these were the three approaches I wanted to show you. Now on to the bonus section. I'm not affiliated with our studio. I just wanted to hint that uh, at this um, there are more drivers available. If you happen to be on an RStudio professional plan, then you can access these drivers without additional cost. But as I said, um, you should be able to access most um, commercial databases using the free ODBC package. So this is just a hint um, if you're using RStudio products, um, a, paid, a paid plan anyway. Um, you can also use the RStudio connection pane. Maybe you've seen it in our studio, new connection. It shows what's installed and available on your system. So this is a screenshot from an RStudio website on my system. Um, not all of these options are installed. Um, and the nice thing is when you click on one of these um, databases or connections, you can get an R code snippet that shows you how to connect to this database. So you don't need to um, look up in some folders if you, if you find an R code example from a colleague or whatever, but you can conveniently access the connection details via the connection pane. Administrators can make connections available here, and you can even use packages that support connections, and you can even use Shiny applications for connection interfaces. So there are some links here um, where you can find out more about that. Right, um, now shortly about best practices. It's a good thing to avoid SQL injection attacks. If you're not familiar with this, um, you can pause the video here to check out this cartoon. It's one of my favorites, XKCD. Very good, very much recommended to check that out. There are also books with this comics and, and a great website. So covering a lot of topics in data analysis and programming and um, statistics. So here's a neat example about SQL injection attacks. So of course you want to avoid these SQL injection attacks and um, there's a danger of uh, falling victim to a SQL injection attack when you use the dbget query function and you allow users to um, paste arbitrary SQL code that is then executed on your database. So you can avoid that using so-called parameterized queries using placeholders. And there are some functions here that you can use to um, implement that approach. And you find some links to, to get more information. They also point to db.rstudio.com, so that's really a great resource that I can recommend. There's a dedicated website for securing deployed content, and there are also several approaches how to secure your credentials. So of course, the recommendation is to never put credentials in plain code, and especially not upload that plain code on GitHub even. So you may want to avoid that, and there are several approaches you can take to avoid that. One is to encrypt credentials using the keyring package, one is to keep credentials in a separate so-called YAML file, and you can manage that with a config package. You can, al you can also use environment variables if you prefer that. Or if you want a more interactive approach, you can prompt for credentials using the RStudio API. And then every time your script runs, somebody with database access um, needs to type in the database password. So that's also possible. That's, of course, not fully automated, but um, definitely more secure than storing credentials in your code. Right, that was almost it. Last slide, some package recommendations. You can pause the video again. I don't want to read out everything that's on this slide. The packages on the top um, above this black horizontal line are from the RStudio team. Um, some of them I talked already about. So the pool package I haven't mentioned, I think, um, to 
manage database connections in Shiny apps. And then there are two packages below that horizontal black line. These are not by the RStudio team, but from outside RStudio. So just to show you, you don't always need to use RStudio products or just use their website. Um, there's this Win Vector company. Um, I read a lot of R code and I don't think their packages are too popular. I'm not so sure. Um, but what I can say is um, they're very knowledgeable about R. So their blog is a great source of information there sort of tidyverse skeptics, as far as I know, from some things I read on their blog. Um, so they implemented a different type of pipe operator that lives in the wrap R package. And there's a query generator and also a bridge between um, SQL and the data table package. So you may want to check out these packages. I'm not experienced with these, but um, I'd welcome any feedback about the approaches you take, including these two packages. So I guess that was it for today. I hope you found something useful in this video. Um, let me know which approaches you take, what your experiences are. All the best for your data analysis and your, um, your database connections, all the work you do in that um, part. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Check out my other videos. All the best. See you next time. Ciao.